On a recent episode of Only Time Will Tell, we discussed the Gildan Estate and the various spirits that seem to call the place home. On the line now is longtime listener Jude from Scarborough, and he's got a story to tell. Thanks for calling in, Jude. Hey man, thanks for having me. I love your show, and I'm a big fan of the Scarborough stuff. So you were talking to me about something strange you saw at Guildwood Park. Why don't you tell the folks at home what happened? Yeah, for sure. So it's a nice summer night back in 2009. I must have been 16, 17, something like that. Me and three guys go to Guildwood Park in Scarborough to do a bonfire on the cliffs. And night was going great. We shot the shit for a couple hours, had some beers, and we decided to pack it up around 4 a.m. So we start walking back, and at that time, there was this really narrow pathway. At one end of the path, there's this cabin, and the other end of the path leads to a parking lot. So me and my boy Steve, we have flashlights, right? And he stops to tie his shoes, while the other two guys, they're kind of playing around, and they run down the pathway to see who could make it back to the van first. So they run off. I'm flashing my light at Steve because he's tying his laces and the beam from my flashlight kind of leaks over his shoulder towards the pathway behind him and I see someone walking up to us. So I'm like, oh shit, let's get the fuck out of here. So Steve also has a flashlight in his hand, stands up and shines a light down the pathway behind him and I swear to God, we saw a kid standing there wearing all white rags and shit like a torn up hospital gown. Jesus. And so we freak the fuck out. We run to the van where our boys are. We start telling them essentially what we saw. Now one of them gets out of the van and grabs a baseball bat from the trunk and says he wants to go back to check this out. But as he's saying that, we see headlights pull up at the gates in front of Guildwood Park. It's a police cruiser. He's like 20, 30 feet away from us and he's just waiting there. Well, here's the problem. We're driving Steve's grandpa's van. We've already had a few beers. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. This is not going to look good at all. Uh, we figured the best idea would be to just be honest with the cop and let him know what's going on so he doesn't think we're a bunch of drunk teenagers, uh, you know, up to no good. Damn, Jim. That's a bold move. What happened next? So we drive over. I roll down the passenger side window, and I see this officer sitting alone in the car. No partner, nothing. He's just alone in the car with both of his hands on the wheel and he doesn't say a word. He's got this weird look on his face like he's nervous or scared or something. So I start talking, I'm like, hey officer, you're not gonna believe this, but we saw something weird in the forest just now. He doesn't say anything for 20 seconds, maybe longer. He's just staring at us with this expressionless look on his face. So he goes, if you really saw what you think you saw in those woods, then I suggest you kids get the hell out of here. Then I swear to God, he reverses so quick past the gates back onto the street and peels off. And we're just freaked the fuck out now, so we're like, let's get the fuck out of here too. And that was 14 years ago, and I still haven't gone back to Guildwood Park. No one's gonna convince me to go back there. Even last summer when my cousin got married, I told him, yo, you're my boy and I got you, but I, I'm never going back to Guildwood Park, I promise you. You know, I sent him a case of Backwoods as a gift, and I slept good that night. Backwoods? Well, that's a fascinating story, Jude. I know for a fact you're not the first person to see something unbelievable around there. Thanks for calling in. Anytime, man. Anytime. Yeah, yeah. Woo!